we're going to talk about autoimmune thyroid and what you can do to fix it. And my name is, again, Ian Holloman. I work at a uh, center here in Boulder called Redtail Wellness Centers, uh, where we strive to let your health soar. Uh, I'm actually a falconer, and I'm passionate about birds, especially birds of prey. And um, so in my practice, this is just an area that I've basically specialized in. I read a lot of research, I go to a lot of seminars, and I try to um, understand the core issues that are going on. So like, we really focus on some specific areas. First of all, our background, we're board certified chiropractors, uh, which is in Colorado primary care physicians, okay? So we're basically port of entry physicians. We take care of a lot of complaints. If you know, things arise, thyroid conditions, if medications are necessary, then we refer out, we, we work with other medical doctors and I have really good re relationships with medical doctors in and, and around uh, Boulder. Functional medicine, I'll talk about that today. Um, I'll be sitting for my examination 2012, but that's basically a, an additional training subset from chiropractic. We're again uh, applied kinesiologists, so we've done extra training in manual muscle testing. It's a holistic um, healthcare study focusing on getting the root issue of problems. And then I've taken all courses taught by this gentleman who wrote this book, Dr. Datis Karazian. Um, and um, this guy is phenomenal. Uh, he is the reason, one of the reasons that, that I'm actually um, succeeding with my thyroid patients because it, it's not necessarily a thyroid problem. It's an immune problem, okay? So in both alternative and traditional allopathic practices, most of the time when a thyroid condition arises, it's treated as a thyroid problem. But if you don't address the underlying issue, which is your immune system, it's kind of become the redheaded stepchild and is getting beat up on. If you don't address that piece, you can't get a handle on your own physiology, your own function, your own quality of life. So functional medicine, a great metaphor is, is the iceberg. I don't, you know, up here we've got symptoms. This is your clinical presentation. This is what's going on with you from a day-to-day -day basis. Here is the actual underlying problem. So what functional medicine does is it looks at function. What's not functioning right in your body? Is it important to me that your TSH is in balance? Absolutely. Is that the only thing that I look at? No way. I can't. Because as you'll see, there are triggers, there's leaky gut, there's food sensitivities. There's lots of different things that supported in the literature, peer-reviewed literature, that our medical doctors should be reading, but they don't have the time, that address the condition. And that's really what functional medicine do, does. And, and I'll also talk about it, and it's, it's also a great way to think of it as a 30,000-foot view. So taking that, that viewpoint and, and looking out and seeing what really is going on. So our objectives today is to understand your thyroid and your thyroid condition better than the average medical doctor. And I love it when, when patients come back to me and, and they tell me they've started having a conversation with their MD and the MD just gets flustered because they start asking these questions. The MD knows that it's an autoimmune condition, but they have no idea how to treat it. And so they kind of say, well, we, you know, we just need to balance your TSH. But I feel like crap. I don't want to get out of bed. I'm brain fogged. I'm fatigued. You know, my bowels aren't good. What does TSH matter if you can't, you know, help me? So that will that will come up. Just you know, hold back on the reins a little bit. Um, give them some credit. They they are good people. Um, it's just some of them don't want to take the the time to to dig in. So grasp the simple complexity of Hashimoto's as an autoimmune condition. All right, it's an immune system problem. I want you to leave you in changed and empowered to make, a you know, to make a change and affect your life from here on out and, of course, give you the tools and resources to help you to do so. And then, um, of course, at the end, I'm going to offer you guys a one-on-one -on -one consultation. So that's in the cards. If you guys identify, if you, if you say, wow, this is me, and you want to look further into your health, then we're going to offer you that tonight. So we're going to talk about thyroid physiology and function. Hashimoto's, Hashimoto's for you, that, for you that don't know, is really the proper term for autoimmune thyroid. Okay, so I'll be kind of using that interchangeably. 
Uh, your story in the honeymoon phase, talk a little bit about that. Triggers and treatment, of course, treatment that I, that I typically do. And I'll kind of talk about typical standard, typical alternative, and then you know what, what I do as well. So before we can focus on the good stuff, we got to get through the boring stuff. So this, of course, is our thyroid larynx, which becomes the Adam's apple for the men, not so much for the women. Thyroid gland, which is a butterfly-shaped gland, and then your trachea right here. Okay, so you can actually you can palpate it. Some of you will notice that you may have a gland, you, you may have a goiter here, you may have a mass, you may have a nodule. That's something to be checked out by either me or a medical doctor if that's there. And that can mean different things. Okay, so I'm not gonna necessarily get into that. I don't want to bore you too much. But to understand thyroid physiology, I'm gonna take you kind of from the from the top down and really get you guys to understand what's going on here. So the hypothalamus, which is an area in your brain, secre secretes a hormone called TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone, okay? This hormone acts on a master gland in your body called the pituitary gland. And in um, Ayurvedic and Indian um, philosophy and, and medicine, that's your third eye, is your pituitary gland. So, the pituitary gland says, oh, TRH, okay, we better secrete TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Many of you know TSH because that's what medical doctors test. Um, and so again, when the pituitary gets acted on by TRH, that releases TSH. TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone does what you would think it, do, it does. It activates the thyroid gland to then make inactive thyroid hormones, okay? In the thyroid gland, when TSH is released, you have certain cells, okay, just these little guys that make inactive thyroid hormones. Those inactive thyroid hormones are called T4, okay? Because thyroid and then four, four iodine molecules, right? And then T3, one less iodine molecule is thyroxine. Thyroxine is T3. So what happens is that process doesn't even happen in the thyroid gland. Really what's happening in the thyroid gland is the production of T4. There is an enzyme that's also made in the thyroid gland called thyroid peroxidase or TPO, okay? We'll talk about that quite a bit today. That's the most common attack that occurs in the thyroid gland is this thyroid peroxidase. It's an enzyme. And that enzyme is what helps us cleave that fourth molecule so that you get that active thyroid hormone, okay? So that's important to, to kind of keep that in your mind. Now, what happens is, again, you see the T4 kind of comes out. And what's happening is it kind of starts going into to other areas in the body. And that TPO, that thyroid peroxidase enzyme, and for some reasons that we don't understand quite yet, in different areas in the body, that cleaving mechanism happens and we get active thyroid hormones. So when thyroid hormones are made, 93 to 97% of those hormones are inactive. Only 3% are active. What that means is that there's just checks and balances in the body. So you don't want to just produce a bunch of thyroid hormones because every cell in your body has a receptor, meaning kind of a place where those thyroid hormones dock and they kind of lock on and then they, they, they do their jazz and they create function. So you want checks and balances in the body. One of those is at the liver. 60% of our body and the body in our body's making thyroid hormones, it happens in the liver. So if you don't have proper liver function, you can't make active thyroid hormones, okay? 20% is made in the gut by an enzyme called gut sulfatase, if you're interested. And that is dependent on healthy microbiota or healthy probiotics, a healthy gut environment. So thyroid hormones are dependent on healthy liver function, and healthy gut function, okay? Super, super important and st stuff that I work on with all my patients. So, and then there's other areas in the body that, that help create those thyroid hormones. So again, 
hypothalamus, TRH, to pituitary gland, pituitary gland to TSH, making inactive thyroid hormones in the presence of thyroid peroxidase, inactive becomes active. 90% of people with hypothyroidism, which is classified as anyone with elevations of TSH above a, a lab reference range, has an autoimmune condition. Said differently, if you're hypothyroid, 90% chance of you having an autoimmune condition. So it's the most common cause of hypothyroidism in the United States after the age of six years. Worldwide, the most common cause of hypothyroidism is iodine deficiency. And there's a very hot debate in natural and alternative about iodine and its use later. Um, and there's estimates of, of 14%, up to 14%, I would say it's higher, um, of the US population have positive thyroid peroxidase antibodies. And then this at the end says the positive correlation between thyroid peroxidase antibody counts or titers and thyroid stimulating hormone levels in normal suggests that thyroid peroxidase antibodies are indeed a marker for future thyroid failure. So really all that's saying is that if you have antibodies against your thyroid, you're losing thyroid tissue. You're losing function over time because the thyroid tissue is, is being destroyed. It's being attacked over time. And then it's just kind of at what point do you start having symptoms? And what point do you start losing enough function that it becomes, you know, um, it becomes abnormal on blood work? Here's some key things to if you really do have Hashimoto's. Yes, one, the, the, the really important thing is, is to you know, get tested. Do you have positive thyroid peroxidase antibodies? But a lot of people have symptoms of Hashimoto's, but they don't test positive for it. So that's kind of an interesting paradox. And really what happens is autoimmunity ebbs and flows. It's a roller coaster. It goes up and it goes down. So you have good days and you have bad days. And what's happening as you lose your thyroid tissue from this antibody attack, you lose more of the function. And so it, again, it takes sometimes a long time for you to eventually have a positive antibody test. So elevated TSH, obviously we talked about that, thyroid stimulating hormone, consistently elevated thyroid medication. If you have to keep increasing your thyroid medication, that is a huge clinical key. So, but think about it, just like I said, if you keep losing more of your thyroid tissue, wouldn't you have to keep taking more medication? Um, mixed hypo and hyper symptoms. We'll, I'll go over a little bit more, but hypo, we got classic sim symptoms, right? So sluggish, brain fog, fatigued, difficulty losing weight, thinning of the outer third of the eyebrow, you know, thinning and losing hair, um, lots, you know, brain fog, mentioned that. There, there's lots of symptoms there. And the, on the hyper side, you've got anxiety, palpitations, inward trembling, anxiety. You've got almost, you know, it's almost like a flip of the other side. And again, because we've got this up and down, up and down, a lot of times you switch in between with those symptoms. And so, and you really don't have to be under or overweight to have th the issue. It can, it can be, you can be anywhere in the spectrum. And then family history of any autoimmune disease. So if you have family history of celiac, if you have family history of RA, other people in your family have um, you know, a thyroid problem, it screams autoimmune because any autoimmune condition really requires some factors and one of those is genetics. Can I yeah. The, the TPO antibody. If you ask for it. You have to really request it for your, from your medical doctor. You have to really be on Google and, oh, I heard about Hashimoto's and I heard about this, you know, antibody and could you test it? And typical response is, you know, there's no reason to because it doesn't change my treatment. And that's the truth is, is, yeah, some will play ball and say and humor you and, yeah, sure, we'll add it. It's positive. Well, what does that mean? Oh, you have an autoimmune condition. We need to monitor your TSH and we need to get you stabilized in thyroid hormones, which is important. I, you know, I can't stress how important that is to have normal stabilized thyroid hormones. But 
unfortunately, they're not going to look to the underlying mechanisms of what's going on. So that's a wonderful question.